Another weekend and another large group of recruits visiting Coach Prime in Colorado. And as I've said before, and I've said this ad nauseum, Coach Prime is doing it right. His staff is doing it right. They're bringing in experience. And it's funny, some of the locations that he's getting these players from. Let's talk about this past weekend, as well as a couple of victories as far as commits. Coming up here in about 10 seconds. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation. In this video, we're going to talk about Colorado's big recruiting weekend and a couple of victories they got out of it, as well as the last week. Um, It's been a few days since I've talked about Colorado football, so I want to jump in and dive, especially on these last two edge winners and all these players that pulled up to Colorado this weekend. And I've talked about this ad nauseum, even in the introduction, Coach Prime and his staff are doing it right. They're going after the players that are going to be impactful today. They're going to be impactful this coming season. And they're guaranteed to win more than one game next season. And that's the critical part of what is needed to do in order to ascend over the next couple of years. And so looking at this group of players that have pulled up, Man, he is really swinging for the fences for veteran, graduate transfer type players with a lot of experience and ones that have got a lot of experience in major conferences. Like you've got the the players from the Big Ten. You've got players from the SEC. And all that tells me is is that he understands what needs to be done. His staff understands what needs to be done in order to win Power 5 football. He's not leaning in on his own understanding. And so that's something we can definitely continue to talk about. But before I do that, y'all know the routine. Hop in the comments. Let your boy know. This big weekend that Colorado just had, you had a couple of big wins with Taylor Upshaw from Michigan that just committed. And then you had Jordan Dominic from Arkansas that joins Miles Slusher, the safety, at Colorado. Let your boy know what you think. Hop in the comments right now want to hear your thoughts as well as if you're new to the channel hit that like subscribe and the bell notification dropping a lot of college football content and i love talking about what's hot in the streets right now as well as some of my favorite teams so we would love to have you join the family so let's dive into first the weekend itself and players that pulled up um that's on note the commits that just recently came down the line and taylor upshaw as well as Jordan Dominic as and then finally some of the other commits that came down the line and one player that we're waiting on to commit from maybe today or tomorrow maybe by the time this video drops he's already committed we will see in Cormani McLean so this weekend we saw a lot of players with experience pull up to Colorado to you know tour the campus talk about you know potentially coming there and all of that and so when I saw the article around about nine or ten ish players that they have come into town it told me oh okay coach prime and Emma for real on this game they trying to do some stuff and so let's look at who pulled up for this visit so some of the veterans that pulled up, let's start off with the transfers and then we'll go to the recruit that we know definitely that pulled up in town. That's really of, of importance. First off, we had Xavier Weaver, who comes from the University of South Florida. He is a teammate of recent Colorado buff transfer, Jimmy Horn Jr. And so the question is, is will he decide to pull up and play with his old teammate? I can totally see the dynamic duel being there together. Um, Weaver had a pretty solid year. 41 receptions, averaging 17 and a half yards per catch, which is pretty big um, in 2001. And in 2022, he had a career best of 53 catches for 718 yards. He was a second team all AC selection. Adding Xavier Weaver with Jimmy Horn Jr. is kind of significant because South Florida was in the runnings to go after Coach Prime. And they lost out to Colorado. Now he is slowly starting to get players, which is fascinating, is from the South. He's pulling a lot of players that are originally from southern states like North Carolina and these two players from Florida. It's interesting to see the type of caliber athletes he's going after and leveraging his celebrity as well as his coaching ability to bring these players in and make Colorado a contender immediately. And so... Xavier Weathers won. Next up, you had 
Micah Bernard. Micah Bernard, running back from Utah. He rushed for more, more than 500 yards and 250 yards each of the last two seasons for the Utes. He was averaging about five yards per carry, and he's adding potentially to a running back room that's going to be filled with a freshman in Dylan Edwards and then Cavassier Smoke, who just transferred there from Kentucky. We'll talk about him a little bit later, as I am a big fan of Cavassier Smoke, mainly because he's got one of the greatest names ever, and we'll talk about that later. But Micah comes out of California, so he's one of the uh, class of 2019 recruits uh, for Utah, and he was highly toted, you know, 5'10", almost 200. He's something that definitely can help them today in getting past, like I said, that 1-11 and season. So another player that came in and did the visit, and he actually decided to commit last night, was Taylor Upshaw. Taylor Upshaw, now he's had a lot of experience, maybe not a lot of uh, results, but he has played a lot, and he played for a really good Michigan team, especially on the defensive side. They were loaded on that line. I mean, you had Aiden Hutchinson that came out of there and went to the league, and then David Ojabo, who went to the league this past season, and so because of that, there's not a lot of opportunities to really get in there, but he has seen a lot of action, 38 games of action, two starts over five years. He recorded 43 quarterback pressures, Based on the article, 35 tackles, six and a half sacks, and an interception, which he got against Ohio State, which is a big deal because, you know, they hate each other so much. But Taylor comes in there. A lot of people were vying for his services coming out of high school in 2018. He was uh, he had more than 20 power five offers, including the Clemson's and Florida's and Oklahoma's, etc. And he's flipped his commitment to Michigan from Florida. And so having a player like this out of Florida is big for Coach Prime as that continues to add roots into the state that he comes from, he hails from, and getting recruits to come into town. And so Taylor Upshaw has committed. He is there. He is a buff. Congratulations. That's a huge deal. And then lastly is Jordan Dominic. Um, another ACC and SEC athlete. He started his career at Georgia Tech, the 6'3", about 260 edge. Played well for in his time at Georgia Tech. He went from there and then went as a graduate transfer to Arkansas this past season. And in his past season, he had seven and a half sacks. And so he was a pretty solid contributor. Nine sacks for the Yellow Jacket with 137 tackles in 44 games. So he's got a lot of experience, something that I may mention a lot of, and I will keep saying Coach Prime and him are going after these players with experience because it's going to do nothing but help their defense day one. Instead of getting a bunch of young players, adding in a bunch of veterans that can go out there and get a little bit more cohesion probably quickly because they understand the collegiate world. They've got collegiate bodies that's going to do nothing but help them propel themselves early. Look at what TCU did. They got a bunch of transfers in for their new coach, and they were able to make college football playoffs. I'm not saying Colorado will, but I'm saying that this will give them an opportunity to truly compete week in and week out. You got to do this with a bunch of transfers. And another thing about Jordan Dominic is that he is from Lakeland, Florida, another Florida player. I'm telling you, they're pulling a lot of players from the South, from these SEC schools, stealing as many of these as they possibly can to try to build a power out there in Colorado. And I think that Coach Prime has an opportunity with his staff to do this if he keeps this up. And now the big name that pulled up this weekend that we're expecting to go ahead and hit that commitment, Kamani McClain. Now, the top corner, we talked about him in a couple videos. I'm not going to keep, you know, I'm not going to, throw down on who he is or whatnot, but he was caught this weekend in Colorado. He was supposed to have been at the crib and Miami came and pulled up at his high school. And guess what? He told him, I'm not going to be there. He hit him with the magic. And instead he was in Colorado hanging out. There's a few pictures floating around of him lined up with coach prime and staff. And he was out there, you know, actually doing his thing. You know, he was out there, showing that he wants he may potentially sign up. And so with his commitment coming supposedly today, which is Sunday the 15th that I'm recording this and going to be posting this up, we have to see if he actually does it. And so the question is, is can Coach Prime get Cormani to flip from his Miami commitment, come to Colorado, and sign on National Signing Day on February 1st? Don't know, but I'll say this. They've got some wins. And then outside of that, Earlier this week, they added, they bolstered the offensive side with Yusuf 
Magarby. So you add Yusuf and then you add Cavassier Smoke. I think that's two big pickups. An interior offensive lineman from North Carolina that played at Florida, class of 21. So he's young, four star, that can walk in, top 300 player, can play today on the interior offensive line at 6'5, 330 pounds. Yusuf can go out there and probably take somebody's job at Colorado. And you add Cavassier Smoke, who had over 5,000 yards rushing in his career at Kentucky. And he was a pretty solid contributor there. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And that, that to me really exemplifies that, as I've been saying before, that Colorado ain't playing when it comes to trying to win that Pac-12. And this shows that, you know, if they do it right, there's a good chance that they can win the conference with just transfers the first year while building up their own classes. Right now, Colorado is rated class-wise. They're a top 22 class overall. That includes transfers and commits for the class of 2023, 44th in class and recruits, third in transfers. They add Cormani McLean, and they fly up that list, and that could put them as a top 20 overall class if they land Cormani McLean, and I kind of think they will. So... <clears throat> Thanks for pulling up. I want to talk about some of these big wins that Colorado got, especially with all the visits this weekend. This is huge for Colorado Buff fans. I know y'all are excited. I'm ex- I'm stoked and excited for you too. I'm gonna adopt Colorado as my Pac-12 team for now, and let's uh let's see if we can uh, get some W's or whatnot. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Hit the like, subscribe, bell notification. We love to have you for the family and uh, join us. And uh, with that, we'll chop it up a few hours or so. Peace.